transition and care uh, is a handoff. It's a handoff from that doctor to their new doctor or a new specialist to that specialist. And so the, the litmus test for transition and care is that it can be done safely. And so uh, that's what we do all day is determine medical necessity and medical safety for our members. So the transition would be if you are in the midst of a treatment plan like cancer chemotherapy, um, a staged surgical procedure where you've already had one and you need two more. We would not, that's a continuation of existing care that needs to come to completion. You had a surgery on November 7th and you have to go in on November 17th and have uh, your stitches removed. Well, that's a transition of care. All those things would be no disruption, uh, no confusion. We would allow all that to occur. Examples of where that doesn't occur in part of our transition and care is if uh, you have a surgery scheduled November, December 1st, after this uh, date, uh, when your ABQ doctor is no longer in our network. It's our job to help you transition to a doctor who could still provide that care. So we would look at that case on a case-by-case -case basis like we do every day and we would say if we were to change from this current situation what is this the, the disruption to the member and what's the safety surrounding that anything that really is not harmful or even if delayed for two or three weeks would not result in harm to you then we would elect to get you an appropriate comparable surgeon of the same event to do that procedure and then if he had to do some extra tests around that to be comfortable with doing the procedure those would be waived if it's commercial uh, full insurance ASO or self-insured uh, that would have to be an agreement because they are paying for the insurance so we would work with them and see what they would say um, another example would be if that in any way we thought by delaying it. Let's say you had a dark spot that they were worried was a melanoma or a cancer of your skin. And you had that scheduled for November 15th. And to have that change might take a month, month and a half. And well, clearly that could result in harm. That cancer could spread, it could become worse. We would allow that surgery to go on. If you already are pregnant and established with an ABQ Health Partners physician, we will honor that relationship through the completion of your pregnancy and the delivery of your baby and for six weeks postpartum because after you deliver, the mother has some issues that needs to go back to her OB doctor and make sure everything heals properly and goes properly. We do not want to interrupt that relationship. So we have honored in network no difference, not an out-of-network situation will be considered in-network through the entire pregnancy, delivery, and six, uh, 42 days or six weeks after that. And we have articulated that in a letter to the obstetricians and midwives who work for ABQ Health Partners. So there's no confusion. We are aware of all of our members who have special needs, uh, have uh, getting infusion therapies for their arthritis, have implantable cardiac devices, have a uh, uh, Coumadin clinic, need chronic Coumadin management and monitoring. Uh, the, all those types of things we know we are identifying those populations and working with our partners at New Mexico Heart Institute, Hematology Oncology Associates to transition those members uh, appropriately. Again, it's about the handoff. Uh, that we don't want any adverse event to occur to the best of our ability.